Well, guess what, you guys? We are back down out of the mountains and going to a whole new place today. What are you doing, Mr. Blackbird? Why don't you get out of the rain? Because you're in the desert and there's nothing to get under. Annual passes. Hi, how are you? Good, Pretty good, man. So we want to get the annual parks pass. Right on. Let me get the card. We're working on it. <laughs> right on, man. Is our park pass a card? Mile and a half in from here. All right. Cool. Thanks, partner. Have a good time out here. Look at our new park pass. How cool is that? I didn't know it was going to be a card. We're like bona fide card carrying national park members. I don't think right. it's called a member, but is that what it's called? A member? No, it's just a pass. I'm going to call it a member. It's like having a season pass to Disneyland. Right? Grown-up Disneyland. All over the whole United States. And some minor outlying U.S. territories. <laughs> well, we're going to drive to some territories too? Some islands? You know it when I get the amphibious <laughs> upgrades done. Let's switch it to underwater mode. Let me first switch it over to ocean transport mode. Well, as per, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Tradition, we have to go get our fancy park pass stamped. And our passport. And then we have to get our little staff medallion, obviously. So that's why we're here. Look, it's blue sky over there. Yeah, we better hurry up to the north end. That's what I'm trying to tell you. All right, I should be a kind of a pushy chick, so. <laughs> Here's the rainbow forest gift store, gift shop, whatever you call it. There's our map, here's magnets. We must be near Route 66 right now, that's for sure. Probably on it. You found one you like? Yeah. Cool. You can also collect pocket watches apparently. Yeah, I don't have that much time. <laughs> uh -huh. Onward, through the park. Oh my gosh, you can totally see all these fallen tree logs that have become petrified. It's starting to look so cool here. Look at this coming up. A tree? It's the only tree in the whole park that's so still alive. <laughs> and not made of rock. Poor little lonely guy. Yeah, the last living tree in the park. He's afraid of his future becoming petrified. <laughs> I don't want to turn to stone. All right. <laughs> These are the teepees. Oh. Studebaker out here that kind of marks the spot where the original Route 66 crossed the Petrified Forest National Park. But Route 66 was actually established in 1926, so in a few years we're about to have its 100 year anniversary. That's pretty cool. Oh, and look at the cool bench they have built here with the 
This is the front grill off of some old car, right? Yeah. So neat. Lacey Point. Let's see what little Lacey has to offer. Isn't that spectacular? I mean, that is really something. We just came up over a hilltop to the most breathtaking view, you guys. Oh my gosh. You can't even see it all from here. I have to get out of the bus to show it. <laughs> this view is from Kachina Point and also the Painted Desert Inn. So this is the only place where you can spend the night in the whole Petrified Forest National Park because there is no camping or boondocking here. In fact, there's gates at both the north entrance and the south entrance. So you can leave at night, but you can't turn around and come back in. You just can't stay anywhere in the park except here. Where are you headed over there? I don't know, just kind of a photogenic place, really. You're exploring. I really like this little inn. It has all these little steps and walkways and patios all the way around it. Are these the rooms? What? Oh, it seems cl it's closed right now. Oh. Is there anything in it? Well, it's you can see that it was a bathroom. Oh, There's okay. a sink. Apparently the inn is closed. But there are places you can stay and even boondock right outside. Like last night, we stayed literally right outside the south gate. <laughs> oh, look how cute these little rooms are. Wow. Little bed, a little sink. Oh, this would be a cute little place to stay. Look at these cool little patios. Covered verandas. Very Santa Fe style building. Hmm. Seems like a really neat building. Oh, you know what? The sign on the counter just says closed for the season. Do they only open all winter? I just noticed this is all petrified wood around the door. So Here's your first close-up look at some petrified wood, although this has a lot of like mortar on it. We're going to go find some fresher samples of petrified wood. They even have a doggy drinking fountain for in the desert. That's the cutest thing ever. This is how cool that painted desert inn looks from a distance. It just blends in with the natural landscape so well. It's beautiful. And here's our happy photographer, happily take, photographing. You can't really take a bad picture here. You can try, <laughs> but like, give it hell. It's pretty spectacular. It's just so vast, like you can see literally for a hundred miles out there. This is the Petrified Forest National Park Painted Desert Visitor Center. We just found where to get our little passport book stamp. We have to find national park passport. I don't remember how to do this. Um, we're in the yellow state. Well, green we're state green still. West. We're in yeah. the green. We're going to yellow next. She's I was the a, expert. I was ahead now of listen myself. to her. We're page 82. Oh, she knows exactly what page. Oh, well, how cool. But we need the official roundy oh, one. Oh, there it is. That's the one. Where's the... There's the stamp pad. Wait, I never get to do this. I know, you're so excited right now, huh? September 1st. We're up to version six. Boom. Awesome. That is super cool. We are stamped and ready to roll. Oh, the painted desert. We get one of these too. Oh, no, it says 
Petrified Forest. Forest. This one says painted dead. Yeah, oh, there are part. two different This is a twofer? Oh my god, I need to activate put it, put this with right my here. podo. Fill up that space. My ham radio. There we go. I Family. can get a twofer. Look how beautiful this is oh, when it's cool. been it's, you know, cut like this. this out. A little bit different just because of the, the nature of the... Thank you. And it's a long night. Yeah, and I, I don't think that is the case. Well, look at this slice of a slab. Beautiful. Uh, uh, right now I'm working on uh, just cleaning up from some bubble skulls of some animals from the Brumesa area. And these are Tumatopsor skulls. Oh, oh, that's the skull. It's just flat. Oh my gosh, that is the real deal. Yeah, so I've got two different skulls here. So this is already cleaned up. I've already removed all the rock. And so this is a, a, a full skull. It's upside down. So what you're seeing is the underside of the skull. Okay, got it. So you can see the eye sockets are right there. Yeah. Now it's this way. And yeah, you see the teeth. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And this doesn't quite have as many teeth, but what I'm doing right now on the edge right here is I'm just trying to expose some of the teeth that are still intact. They're little tiny things. Oh, or is that just what's left of the teeth? Yeah, yeah, there's really, yeah, there's the, the tips are kind of broken off. They're kind of sheared off just I see. by natural weathering. Um, and then there's a couple of teeth in here on the side that have kind of fallen over that I'm just kind of uh -huh. trying to prep out. But this skull so far doesn't have as many teeth preserved as this one does, but huh. that's okay. Interesting. So my TV should be hooked up too if you want to get a closer look at what these teeth look like. Oh, cool. So just, oh, uh, there they are. Look at there. that. And then these are just like basically empty sockets there to see how it fell out. But I'm just kind of removing the rock to see what's there. Oh, oh cool. Wow, that's neat. That's cool getting to see it actually happen. And thanks for sharing with us. <laughs> thanks, man. Yeah, thanks. Oh, this is awesome. That was such an unexpected added bonus to just being here at the Petrified Forest yeah. National Park today. This is unexpected. Yeah. So unexpected. That doesn't happen all the time. They just, the paleontologist happened to be on site today and working on those skulls. So yeah. that was just cool. What a neat job he has. Yeah, okay, so we have another gift shop to go to. This will be our third gift shop of the day. Yeah, <laughs> stop spending money. <laughs> We've only spent, you bought your little staff thing. How much was that? It's like $7. $7, and then I spent $1 on the medallion. So okay. we're, we're at a whopping $8 so far. I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> but you never know what you're going to see there. Okay, so this is the biggest gift shop we've been in yet. Definitely much bigger than the last one. Good, more magnets to choose from. Hey, this is a really cool Route 66 one. A metal cutout instead of just a, you know, plastic one. Oh my gosh, we bought one thing at each of the three gift shops. Mike bought his hiking stick medallion, and then we bought the little $1 medallion and then we got the petrified forest magnet to add to our collection very cool just to clarify any confusion between are we in petrified forest national park or are we in the painted desert you can see on the map right here this little dark area is the national park the painted desert is just an area of land that comes all the way from way up here at the Grand Canyon all the way down and it swoops across the north end of the Petrified Forest National Park. I don't know if any of you have been to any national parks lately, but you also get great literature at the national parks in the United States. This is the whole Petrified Forest National Park and the, uh, the Painted Desert goes across the north end up here where the visitor center and all these different um, points of interest are located. This is where we parked last night, right outside the South Gate. So we drove through the whole park this morning, went to the visitor center and everything here, and then now we're driving back down again to stop at a few places that we didn't stop at in the morning. So now that we've already taken some of the pictures we wanted to take, we feel like we have more time to just slowly meander through the park and stop at all the cool lookout points and probably a couple of little hiking trails too. The landscape is starting to look completely different now that the sun has come out. Mike's up there just having a heyday taking pictures of everything. He loves this. That guy is his own Ansel Adams. 
we're at Puerco Pueblo, which is right next to Rio Puerco. And this is a prehistoric settlement. Here's some more of the ruins. Can you imagine really building your little house or hut one stone at a time? Kind of, I built like a bus. This. It would take years to build anything at that rate. Here's where you can really see some good ruins. They say these are only one third of the way excavated. The walls continue all the way down deeper under the ground, but they have left it this way to preserve it. Check out these cool petroglyphs over here. He's so eating a frog. Yeah, that's the crazy bird eating a frog. I thought it was a person in its beak at first. I was like, oh my God, they had giant birds back then. That weird shape to the left though, uh, that's a knife sharpener from Walmart. So I'm not <laughs> sure what it's doing there. <laughs> Hopi interpretation recalls stories of a giant bird that came to villages to eat bad children. <laughs> that was a, the Hopi story? Yeah. I think this is the best explanation. Instead of a literal interpretation, this petroglyph likely represents aquatic resources and fertility. Like, you can live here and things will grow here. <laughs> I like the eating bad children part the best. <laughs> So this is actually really interesting. Behind me, these set of boulders actually represent a prehistoric calendar. On the side of this boulder down here is a small spiral symbol. Right there in that area is the spiral. Then on the boulder next to it, see where there's this crevice all the way through the boulder? In the summertime, from June 14th to June 28th, when the sun rises over here in the east, it casts a beam of light in that crevice that points directly at the spiral, just for that short period of time to mark the summer solstice. Isn't that amazing? And not only that, researchers have found over a dozen of this type of prehistoric calendar just in petrified national forest, which isn't that big of a piece of land. There must be thousands of these calendars all across the United States of America. It just amazes me that they were able to tell time so precisely that their instruments of time telling still work today. It just amazes me. Over here is a little herd of deer, or ant antelope maybe. They're so cute. So this is a neat building. I'm not sure what it's here for out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but you know what? I could actually live here. Like this is big enough to be a house for me. Easily. Right? So this is a really old building we're standing in. This was a, uh, what is it? The entrance station to the uh, Petrified Natural Forest. Back uh, when in what Petrified year? was expanded in 1930, Puerto Pueblo is included within a new boundary. This was the north end of the park. Back in the 1930s. This was the entrance station built in 1935, this building, uh, to accommodate the increasing number of visitors arriving by train in the nearby town of Adamana. The wind is blowing terribly right now but we're at Newspaper Rock, so I'm gonna show you and uh, we'll talk about it later. I was wondering why they called this place the Blue Mesa. Have a look. Because it's white, obviously. It's
It's very blue, isn't it? Oh my gosh. This place wasn't right on the main road. You had to go three and a half miles off the main road to get to this. So I, I, I think it was inadvertently we passed it by this morning and we were like, oh, no biggie, we'll catch it on the way back, right? So here we are. And this one, for some reason, is called Blue Forest. Wow. Pretty spectacular, huh? I didn't realize this was gonna be a mile long walk when he talked me into it, but it's kind of interesting. It's literally as if we are hiking on the surface of another planet right now and you can't see anything familiar anywhere. It's so bizarre. It's almost creepy. It's a little bit eerie, isn't it? Yeah, switchbacks. Everybody's favorite. <laughs> it's a neat trail, actually. Good path. Nice stone bench. Christy Campbell, the rocks here are purple and it made me think of you. I mean, look at this. Can you see how purple this is? It's amazing. One of the interesting things you see over and over in this park is where the water has run down and made these little miniature canyons. That's where it has eroded away the dirt and exposed the petrified wood that was underneath. So you just see this everywhere the water has run off. I just said Badlands, and now the sign says Badlands. There's a purple Psychic. Badlands. These guys are crazy. Right? You know, they called that place the Blue Forest, but they should have named it the Blue Moon. <laughs> it was like you were walking on the surface of the moon. It really was like that. Down there. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't blue, it was purple. It was right. Color purple. Yeah. Whoever says blue is just... colorblind. Yep. Made fun of him. It's the only explanation. Yeah. Some geologist. Oh, we're going to go out to the Blue Desert. <laughs> Never learned his colors because he skipped preschool. <laughs> Straight to college. <laughs> okay, you guys, that was a full day of adventure and we only made it halfway through the park. <laughs> well, I mean, we started at the south end and went all the way up and back down again. So I guess we really did cover a lot of ground, but we just don't have the time or the energy to make it to the last few locations in the park and especially um, the two places where you can do a little hike. So we're just gonna pick you up again in the morning and continue on our adventures tomorrow. 
Good morning. We're ready to go, but Mama Kitty isn't in the bus. So, we're looking for her. Mama Sita, who are you? It's kind of great right here though. You can see giant pieces of petrified wood. Look at these huge petrified logs. Isn't that cool? There she is. Mama Sita, we're getting ready to go. Oh, she has to do some yoga in the morning. She can't come in the bus until she's done with her yoga. Oh, she doing kitty yoga. <laughs> Mama Sita, you're so funny. Okay, have a good roll. And then we're going to get on the road. So that was our spot where we stayed for the last two nights. Here is the actual gate at the south entrance. And here is our uber cool Parks Pass. We already got it. Yeah, we were in yesterday. Okay. Thank you. Bye Thank now. you. Cool. We skipped the museum yesterday because we were anxious to get to the north end of the park while everything was still wet and rainy. So we're coming back and doing everything again today. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. It's a phytosaur. Phytosaur is also known as Smilosuchus gregori. He is smiley, isn't he? This is about how the layers of rock tell the story of how the climate changed from a very um, moist, humid climate up into a very arid climate. And that's the different colored layers we see in the painted desert landscapes. Look at this guy. Wow. What a great fossil. Look at this freaky creature. Are you kidding me right now? It is. It is. But it's natural. Yeah. Can you see that? So I mean, go out whoa, I would have hated to meet that guy in real life. <laughs> okay, here's one of the parts I know you all have been waiting to see. Like, but where's the petrified trees, right? Because we've been doing all this other stuff. Here, have a look. Well, you knew they were alive at the same time, at least. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of the deal here. You'll see. Oh, look at this one. It's hollow in the center. That'd be cool as a planter if you filled it with potting soil and grew a flower in the center of it. The only thing I really appreciate about this park is the level they took to protect the park. It was very interesting because there was a lot of pictures on the inside of this place here from the 1800s. And then they went out and took a picture you know in the 2014 or something like that and nothing's changed i mean the it's dirt the might same. be a little bit different or something but it's minor same, erosion or something like that yeah. yeah the same big log trees and stuff are there so. yeah well they've been here for literally millions of years yeah. <laughs> look at how colorful it is and how sparkly it's so amazing i mean it's hard as a rock <laughs> this is the one they call Old Faithful, and it's over 10 feet in diameter. It's huge! Oh, sorry, I got in their picture. <laughs> this one's ginormous! Holy moly! Like the root ball here. Look at this, it's just crazy. Smell. Yeah. Yeah, they say the different colors in the agate or whatever you would 
what is it called? Quartz. The different colors quartz. in the quartz are caused by different minerals like manganese, I think it was copper, and something else. I can't remember them all. Oh, here. this picture is taken right here. Hold it yeah. in front of you. It's a photo of Einstein and his wife. Right. How cool is that? That is pretty neat. That'd be fun to recreate this photograph with like big long coats and stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and put side by side their photo and our right. photo. Yeah, it'd be we'll cool. do that next year for sure. <laughs> you might be wondering why aren't there petrified trees everywhere around the globe? Like, what's so special that makes these ones turn into rock? And that's because normally when a tree falls, it would lay on the surface of the ground and it would be exposed to moisture and oxygen and all these elements. Um, even bacteria that would help it break down and decay away to nothing. But these giant trees were swept away in a river or water runoff from rainfall and swept away and buried under the sand. And silt and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and so... And they were buried in the silt and stuff that prevented the decay. No oxygen was getting to them. So, and the type of soil mattered too. And you can see the type of soil that's present in this area so as it sat in that silt it was protected and so over time instead of decaying the tissue was just replaced by minerals exactly and, uh, to exacting details and that's why we see what we see here yeah today. and petrification is still going on today we just haven't found it yet <laughs> it's not finished yet all you have to do is put it under the ground and bake at 500 degrees for about 200 million years. That's, it. That's the recipe. Obviously.